have arrived at Model Railway Unlimited. Welcome to this video that marks the start of a series featuring the short-lived BTC British Transport Commission early diesel locomotives. However in this one we will initially focus on the rolling stock, all of which apart from the brake van I purchased from Adrian Emberton as he continues to find good homes for the large collection of his relative Malcolm. The 1955 modernisation plan placed orders with many different companies for prototypes and early diesel locomotives, producing a raft of fascinating and attractive locomotives, many of which are available in model form and have lasted far longer than some of their ill-fated real-life counterparts. Let's have a look at this train running first of all. Now taking each vehicle in train order, we will take a close look at the models and discuss the real life versions. British Rail 10 ton Maunsell cattle wagons. These two vehicles from Hornby are catalogue number R6737 and 6737A carrying different running numbers. Designed by Maunsell to diagram 1529 and introduced in 1930 a total of 299 cattle trucks to this diagram were built to essentially the same design as the previous SR built wagons except being on a steel 10 foot 6 underframe rather than wood that were themselves derived from an existing pre-grouping South Eastern and Chatham design. The final batch of 100 cattle trucks to this diagram were introduced in 1939. The two versions of the 1529 diagram cattle truck released by Hornby are numbered S53732 and S53691. Cattle trucks were always placed at the front of trains in order that they would be the first vehicles to be shunted, avoiding delays and stress to the animals. Many were brake fitted, so this was another reason to have them at the front head of the train. While well, we can wonder at the less than ideal method of transporting live animals, we can't ignore this important flow that saw many stations with cattle pens. However, the flow was an early casualty and was quickly phased out as we moved toward 1975 when the traffic ended completely. The wagons are excellent and very well detailed. Press flow hoppers are certainly post-war vehicles, not having been conceived until 1954. They were loaded under gravity, but discharge of the dry cement powder was assisted by compressed air at £20 per square inch. Interestingly, 30 wagons were built for the salt trade, but later further wagons were built with side discharge for salt. Our model is a 1961 built vehicle from Gloucester Carriage and Wagon Works, one of 170 built. It carries a lengthy inscription on one side with instructions for loading and unloading, as well as more centrally mounted set of instructions for clearing blockages. All fully readable and beautifully produced. It's marked for 22 tonnes, whereas the older type from 1956 were only 20 tonne capacity. Of course it's fully fitted, and looking on the underside of the model, it shows that it has been beautifully modelled with hopper, valves and pipes, 
so there was no room for brake vacuum cylinders, which were mounted one end of the vehicle above the sole bar, as seen here. Yes, two cylinders per vehicle. The wagon, and those like it, could still be seen in traffic into the 1980s. This model is by Backman. The story of the Palethorpe Sausage Company and their use of rail travel to transport their products is an interesting one. The LMS sanctioned the building of four six-wheel vans in 1936 which had refrigeration in the form of ice cooling and a fan which created ducted air cooling. The vans were built at Wolverton Works and were rated to carry six tonnes. They were originally painted in LMS Crimson Lake and carried gold leaf lettering with black border. The vans went into service at the beginning of 1937 and carried the Royal Cambridge logo along with a picture of a pack of sausages. The logo changed to pork sausages instead of the Royal Cambridge logo in 1955 or 56. Most of the vans were out of service for transporting sausages by 1964, however at least one M38732 was later used for parcels traffic, but all were withdrawn by the end of 1966. This model by Hornby R6317 is a six-wheel refrigerated van for the Palethorpe Sausage Company. As it says pork sausages, we know it is the later British Railways livery and dates from 1956. It has the well-known floating centre wheel with rodding to ensure the couplings line up on curves. Shell Electrical Oil Tank Wagons Now for some more tank wagons, but this time with a twist. These wagons were neither Class A or Class B, so were exempt from the strict colour schemes. They were painted chocolate brown from 1949 to 1953, when they were changed to yellow thereafter. Built by the Cambrian Railway Carriage and Wagon Company and registered by the Great Western in 1947. Let's look at the Hornby model first, numbered SM3000, the SM prefix being for Shellmex. The model is certainly well presented and detailed, however it seems clear that this is the same moulding as used by Mainline many years back. The simple chassis gives testament to this. Properly marked with single white star means a wagon can run at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. As to the livery, well, I guess this is a milk chocolate colour, but let's compare it to the original mainline model from 1982. As can be seen, it's far darker brown. Numbered SM2202. Clearly the standard Air Ministry tank wagon that mainline used for many, many models, but in reality it's fairly accurate, apart from the fact that it should be presented as a saddle mounted tank and not cradle, as is so often the case with the models we find. Completing the picture is the Replica Railway's yellow tank wagon, with the correct red lettering, again the same basic model as the others. This allows me to run the same traffic from 1953 onwards, but what was electrical oil I hear you ask? Well it was mainly used in large transformers to be found at power stations and substations, but also anywhere large transformers were required. The oil had to be very pure indeed, such that these wagons were made with welded barrels allowing easier cleaning. The oil was very stable at high temperatures and had excellent electrical insulating properties. Hornby's Bog Off Loco, the BR Class 29. It's now time to turn our attention to the locomotive of our train. As while it may seem like a simple little animal, it in fact hides its light rather well. It's been with me since 1985 and has always run sweetly and without fuss. Introduced by Hornby in 1978 as R080, the Class 29 was the result of the rebuilding of the North British Class 21 that had a dismal failure rate from the start. In fact D6110 was a Class 21 and never made it to Class 29 status as it was scrapped in 1968. The Class 21s were introduced between 1958 and 1960 with German built man power units, a rather unconventional four stroke engine. Coupled to this was GEC electrical control equipment, and it was this coupling that proved to be the undoing of the class. 
As early as 1963, one of the class was sent to Davy Paxman's works in Colchester, where a Ventura power unit was installed. A large number of the class were so treated and became Class 29s. The Hornby model is in fact a hybrid between the Class 21 on the sides and the Class 29 at the front. Ish. So right back in 1978 we had a passable Class 21 and we never even knew it. What a great little locomotive and what an interesting bit of railway history it stands ready to tell for those who care to look. Note the SKF branding on the bogey axle boxes and the cab fittings as well. OK, it's not up to modern standards, but it's certainly perfectly passable and I wouldn't get rid of it for anything. Hope you enjoyed this video. Keep a lookout for the next one in the series.